The puzzle in a thunderstorm family got some real punch in the gut news this week. On Tuesday, federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York unsealed an indictment against one Keith Taylor for $2.5 million worth of embezzlement and another million worth of tax evasion. And while that name might not be familiar to you, it's damn familiar to me because Keith Taylor is the dude who founded and runs Modest Needs, the charity we've spent the last five years raising over a million dollars for. And yes, the entity he's accused of embezzling from is that charity. Now, I, I want to be clear up front that these are still just allegations. Taylor issued a statement through his attorney vowing to fight these accusations and clear his name, and that still might happen. But if it doesn't, this is obviously a heartbreaking for us here at Scathing, along with our friends Tom and Cecil over on Cognitive Dissonance, and, and our entire community at that, because look, vulgarity for charity is the best thing I ever did. I am prouder of what we've accomplished there than I am of anything else I've ever been involved with. It is the capstone on my eulogy, and now I'm afraid that it's always going to be tainted. Now, being said, I want to be clear on what this doesn't mean. This doesn't take anything away from what you have done as a community of listeners. If you were a donor to Bulgarity for Charity, or if you promoted the fundraiser, or you told friends about modest needs, you're still the same amazing, caring, generous person that you were yesterday and the day before. You did, we all did what we thought was a good thing. Now, if it turns out that some of that money that you thought was going to needy families was going to, as the indictment alleges, Keith Taylor's cosmetic surgery and outrageously expensive gourmet meals, that just makes you, in addition to caring, generous, and amazing, a victim. But despite all that, it's, it's hard not to second guess yourself, even when you know that, right? Like, I know I'm second guessing myself. I've met this guy. I had breakfast with him once. Not at a two-star Michelin restaurant or where the fuck he's accused of pissing away modest needs funds on. And to be clear, by the way, we paid for the breakfast when we had it. But I sat across from the man and I thought I, I had got a really good sense of him. I, I, and if the shit in this indictment is true, I did not. You know, I could not have been further from the truth. And when that kind of shit happens to you, you can't help but start wondering about everyone. Right? especially when it happens to you twice. As I'm sure you recall, last year we had a different situation where a trusted friend of the show was mired in disturbing allegations that shook our community to its bones. And even before that, the larger community of atheist activists had lost one hero after another as we learned that they'd secretly been pieces of shit all along. And it makes you wonder if everybody actually sucks and they're all just faking it and you're a fucking idiot and you just keep buying it. And that is an easy thing to think right now. Trust me, it is an easy thought to get lost in. But then I'm reminded of the myth of the New York asshole. You've heard this one, right? The, the, the myth that people in New York City are all a bunch of assholes. People repeat this stereotype all the time. And people who visit confirm it, right? Even some people who have lived there for years get caught up in it and repeat it like it's a fact. But it isn't. New Yorkers are some of the nicest people in the world, and the statistics back that up. When you live that close to so many people, you have to be nice. That's why cities are so much more liberal than their rural counterparts. So where does the myth come from? Well, partly it's because most people don't know the difference between being in a hurry and being an asshole, right? You order a pizza in Picky Diddle, Indiana, and they start the call by going, well, thank you for calling Aunt Mabel's Brick Oven Pizzeria on Main Street. How you feel it on this lovely day? Right, you order a pizza in New York, and they're like, Joe's, what do you want? That's not rudeness. That's the byproduct of trying to serve a thousand times as many customers a day as Aunt Mabel's. But that's only a small fraction of where the myth comes from. Where the bulk of the rumor comes from is from people in New York City that are assholes. And I know I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but the fallacy here is in the volume, right? You go to the store and picky diddle to pick up a few things and you're, you're going to encounter, what, eight people, a dozen people? depending on the time of day, it might be as low as zero people. So if one person in a hundred is an asshole, the odds that you're going to run into one on any given trip is pretty low. Now run to the store real quick in the East Village. Pick a few things up. You run into what, 6,000 fucking people? If one in a hundred is an asshole, you're going to run into 60 of them every time you leave your apartment. And I think it's the same thing here, right? Over the decade plus that we've been doing the show, we've met and partnered with hundreds of people. And yes, some of them have turned out to be assholes. Some of them have turned out to be a lot worse than that. But they drown under the vast sea of amazing people in our extended family. And I think of Tom and Cecil, two of the biggest hearts I've ever met and I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I think of Sarah and Aaron and all the wonderful people at Cannes who saw a tragedy and built a shield out of it. I think of Nick, Debbie, Allison, Jeff, and all the great people at American Atheists 
Daryl, Gail, and everybody with Recovering from Religion, Frank and Dan, Thomas and Lydia, Andy, Marsh, Kara, Dan and Jordan, not to mention the thousands of amazing listeners that donated that million dollars plus to Modest Needs in the first place. These are the best people I know, the best people I have ever known. And when you put them on one side of the scale, it takes a lot of assholes to nudge it. Right now, I don't say that in forgiveness, right? We're obviously going to rethink a lot of stuff when it comes to vulgarity for charity, and we'll keep you posted on the changes as they're finalized, but the fundraiser isn't going anywhere. It'll soldier on. It'll continue to show the world the very best of the secular community. And again, depending on how these allegations shake out, I have a pretty good sense of who we're going to be insulting first next year. 